Hey everybody, this is Kyle Goth here from GoatFilmReviews.com, the Goat Film Reviews YouTube channel, and Kyle Nick on Film with this month's movie haul. Uh, I've got some new movies added to the thing. Remember how I said, I keep going back to this, but remember how I said uh, at this year, you know, at the start of the year, I don't, I'm not going to do as many of these. I don't end up with many mo new movies coming in. Uh, stuff, uh, new stuff has come to light, man. Uh, and I've got way too many movies that are being added to the pile here. Thank God I'm watching a lot of the ones I currently have, but... We're going to talk about these. I do these every month if I have more than like five new acquisitions because it's not really worth it for me to do a video that's like three minutes where I just talk to you about movie A that I bought this month. Um, we do these once a month whenever I let you guys know what's being added to my personal collection. I think this is going to be coming up soon here is I'm probably going to start looking at maybe doing an entire physical media uh, video, one of those like six-hour ones where I go through everything I own. I'm probably going to do one of those soon, but uh, this is for now, what I'll be covering. So I'm going to cover the movies I picked up, movies and shows that are added to my physical media collection this month. Um, if you guys are fans of video games, I bought a bunch of video games this month too. I think I bought every Resident Evil game, like zero all the way through to eight. Um, yeah, lots of Resident Evil stuff I bought. I also bought a lot of Star Wars video games when it was, uh, what was it on Star Wars Day, they had a huge sale. So just something right there. I'm not going to show those off today, but all right. First up on the list, uh, Juno. Uh, this was a Blu-ray upgrade. I had this thing on DVD back in like, what is it, 07 when this came out. They used to do digital copy. And back then, digital copy meant you got a digital version for your iTunes. Well, the iTunes account has been locked that has the digital copy I got from the DVD of this movie. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I was like just looking around. This was a cheap little upgrade. Um, I was always a fan of Juno. I actually used to work at the Target uh, where Diablo Cody wrote this movie. She wrote it at a Target uh, in their cafe section. I actually worked at that Target. So got a little bit of a, a time period with that, I guess. But uh, yeah, really funny movie, really cute story. Um, yeah, just an interesting rewatch to put back in there. I was a fan of Juno when it came out. Um, and it's been probably 10 years at least. No, not even probably. I know it's been at least 10 years since I've watched Juno. Um, but it was a worthwhile film to revisit because I like Jason Reitman. So, and yeah, Elliot Page, Michael Sarah, um, great performers in there. J.K. Simmons as the dad. Um, God, there's just, yeah. Jason Bateman is like, man, I didn't think he was creepy in the movie back when I saw it initially. Um, I don't know why, but like, yeah, when I rewatched it now, I was like, God bless it. He is disturbingly like friendly with a teenager. Anywho, neither here nor there. We'll cover that later. Um, next up on the list, this is another series thing. Uh, as you guys know, I'm, I'm a big proponent of physical media. That's why I do this show. Uh, but I don't like that Netflix and other streamers don't have physical copies of their movies. Uh, like I said, Disney Plus, if they released The Mandalorian on Blu-ray, I'd pick it up. If they released WandaVision, Loki, Falcon Winter Soldier, I'd go get those copies of those movies because I'd just i rather have the copy of them. Um, I don't get a series. I don't keep a uh, streaming series very often. Um, I watch like a month, catch up on all the crap I'm on, and then I delete it. So I would rather own a physical version of this mo movie or series than have it otherwise. But if I get the chance, the rare times that one of those do drops, I try to get them before they, uh, before they disappear. And this is a case of this tier. So this is uh, both series. This is The Haunting Collection. So as you can see on the uh, right-hand side, we have The Haunting of Hill House. Left-hand side, The Haunting of Bly Manor. Um, both created by Mike Flanagan. Mike Flanagan's a really good guy. I, I, my interactions with him, I've, I've met him before. I was at uh, the premiere of one of his early works with Doug Jones back in like 2009. Really great filmmaker. Seems like an all-around good person. Um, and it's nice to see him getting like this kind of work. Uh, the Haunting though, I, I'm a big fan of the Hill House book. Uh, the, the show, I was, I was kind of sad that it wasn't 100% like the book, but what we do get is different than the book, but it stands on its own. It's really cool. I'm also a huge fan of Bly Manor. I think Bly Manor is better in my book. Um, I just like the story that's on display in Bly, Bly Manor. I think there's more. Yeah, I think what's going on there is creepier. I like the, the setting more. Yeah, I love both of these series, but big fan of both of them. I really like Bly Manor and Hill House. Um, and that's uh, the Hill House that's there too. It's the extended version. So like four of the episodes have longer cuts. Um, I'd like to see what those are about. So I got the collection because one day when Netflix goes away, 
uh, that might be a tougher show to find. Or uh, if they sell off, kind of like what they did with their their Disney Disney shows, their Marvel stuff disappeared. And sometimes that stuff disappears and just doesn't go anywhere else. And it's like, I'd rather have a copy of it. So I have those. Up next here, I picked up Fear the Walking Dead Season 5. Um, I'm not caught up on this show yet. Uh, I'm kind of watching them all chronologically right now. So I did like the first three seasons of Fear the Walking Dead. And now I'm catching up on The Walking Dead, which I've been... I think I'm in the middle of like season seven is where I left off on that show. So I'm getting back into watching the rest of that because there's like behind a couple years on that, behind a couple years on this one. But uh, this was just, it was really cheap where I was shopping one day. It was like 12 bucks for the season. I'm like, that's really good. So I, I nabbed Fear of the Walking Dead season five. I think Fear of the Walking Dead started off rough. Season one was not good. Um, I like the idea behind it, but season one was just not a good show. Um, season two, better. There, there's some really good stuff in the first half of the season. It kind of gets a little lost in the second half trying to figure out what it wants to do. Uh, and I think season three is fantastic. I think Fear the Walking Dead season three rivals the best stuff I've seen on The Walking Dead. Um, so I, I look forward to catching up on the show. I actually, I've, I've heard really good things about where the series goes post that time too and how it integrates characters we've seen before. Next up on the list, I got the third and final season of American Gods. So... Fun fact, never seen the show before. Haven't read the books. Um, I have the first two seasons. So I got the third one because it was the last season. And again, the shows kind of disappear if you don't nab them. That was like 10 bucks for that season um, on Blu-ray. I will catch up on the show. I will watch. I will read the book and watch the show. I'm interested in both. I just haven't gotten around to it. The first two seasons were really cheap and I got those for Black Friday deals or something like that. And that was kind of the same thing. I got a really cheap deal at the store I was at and... Why not? You know, finish off the cycle. If I, if I paid enough for the first two, I might as well finish the series. So this year I plan on reading American Gods and then watching the show. Um, look forward to that. All right, up next, uh, this is one that I, I love when I can watch, when I can pick up a movie that my wife wants because she does not like my physical media collection as much as I do. And uh, so if I find a thing like, you know, I, she was a big fan of Rocket Man when it came out. So I loved going into the store for groceries and being like, look, Rocket Man's here. And she was like, oh, we have to have that. I was like, oh, yeah, we have to have that. Sure. 1917 was the same thing where I was like, she was like, when does that come out again? I want to watch that. Uh, Dune was the same thing where it's like, oh, man, if she loves a movie, I'm so excited because then we get to own it. Um, and I don't have to push. I don't have to, like, sneak it into the house or anything. I can just have it. That was the case with this film, Jackass Forever. I don't think it's the best Jackass movie, but more Jackass is good. Um, and there's plenty of great things in here. I think my favorite sketch in the movie, they do this Silence of the Lambs kind of thing where they, they convince the people that they're just going to be watching Johnny Knoxville with a snake. And then what they're actually doing is they're going to lock them into the room and, like, release all kinds of shenanigans. It's it's a pretty funny movie all around. I don't think the new guys do great. Um, uh, Poopies is really funny, but I, he's the only one that I really think kind of, like, stands on his own. Um, but, yeah. It's, it's a good enough finale to the character characters. Documentary series, is that what we call it? I don't know. All right. Up next, this is something I've been spying at for a while. I happen to see a really low price copy of it, and I finally added it to my collection. And this is the George Carlin, The Complete Collection? Commemorative Collection is what it's called. So this has a bunch of his HBO stuff and bonus stuff. This thing is like 10 discs or something like that. It's insane. So I'll just read off real quick. It's It's got On Location with George Carlin, George Carlin again, Carlin at Carnegie, Carlin on campus, playing with your head, what am I doing in New Jersey, doing it again, jamming in New York, back in town, 40 years of comedy, you are all diseased, complaints and grievances, life is worth losing, losing, and it's bad for you. I think I've seen the first two and the last two on this previously. So um, he also has an audio CD of I Kind of Like It When a Lot of People Die, which I think was a posthumous audio CD release. Blu-ray copies of Life is Worth Losing and It's Bad For You. It's also got bonus stuff like personal favorites, George's best stuff, George on George, The Real George Carlin, Two Hip for the Room, Apartment 2C, and appearances from five different shows that he was on, and, and a nice little uh, booklet written by Patton Oswalt. George Carlin is probably one of my favorite stand-up comedians, and I know that as far as physical media goes, it's not always easy to get copies of these things, um, and, and stand-up comedy disappears from streaming services a lot. So this is one that if I wanted it, it's probably going to be one of my rare chances at getting it. It's pretty pricey, but there's like, what is that, like 15 
specials, like that, the 15 full specials, like plus a lot of other extra stuff, it just seemed worthwhile when it got to a certain price point. So, and I really like this, I like this co cover where it's all the George Carlin's just kind of hanging out. I don't know, I thought that was really cool. So, added that. Um, this next one I got sent to me. This is the last thing on the show, I guess, today because it's three things, but they're all kind of related. I got sent to these me uh, by a couple of, of viewers. So just cover that right here. Um, for the next 30 minutes, your eyes will leave your body and arrive in this strange moment in time. Uh, so I got sent the collection for Ultra Q, the follow-up Ultra Man, and the follow-up to that, Ultra 7. Um, I've never seen anything in this realm as far as this series goes. This thing is still going today. They release a new series every year or two. Um, and it's basically, yeah, like, it's, it's, from what I understand, it's a very kaiju centric series of stories, usually like uh, robots fighting monsters kind of stuff. Um, I've never seen any of it before. Just kind of, you know, had had piqued my curiosity with things like uh, going through the Godzilla, Gamera films, um, really liking things like Pacific Rim, kaiju-based movies. I, I like that kind of stuff. This is just something that completely missed me, and it felt like something I couldn't get into now because it was too big. Then I had someone explain to me online that, like, each series is kind of its own standalone. So, like, at any point, if you just decide to, to stop, you can stop. And so... I probably will, you know, watch these three and then see where, see where it goes from there. But, um, yeah... Very, very interesting stuff. Um, yeah, there's like 27, 28 episodes to this. Um, I don't know how long the second and third ones are, but yeah, then they would kind of just, each one would add a little bit more to the mythos, monster of the week kind of stuff. Um, this seems like the kind of stuff I would watch with my Saturday morning breakfast. I kind of have rotations of like Pee-wee's Playhouse and uh, the, the Batman 60s show or Ninja Turtles. And sometimes on weekends, I'll watch that while I'm having my cereal. Um, probably going to do the same thing with these. So thank you. For, for sending me these three. Uh, fans of the show are fantastic human beings. Thank you guys for those three as well. All right, folks, that's what I added to my collection this month. Um, hopefully in June, I won't be buying that many things um, because July is the upcoming Criterion sale, which I make mistakes at. So hopefully you won't see an episode of this in June. But uh, let me know any, any of your thoughts on the things that I purchased this month. Have you seen them? Have you not seen them? What do you think? Let me know down in the comments section. Do appreciate that. And while you're down there, please like and subscribe. They're two free things that you can do. They don't cost you a penny, but they help support my channel, which is great for me. And they also make sure that you never miss new episodes of my shows as they come out. I really do appreciate it, folks. Thank you guys for joining me. Until next time, we'll see you.